شكرا okay. Good evening ladies and gentlemen Today I'm going to talk about the impact of COVID-19 on nonverbal politeness Everyone knows that COVID-19 is the synonym of uh, coronavirus nowadays and how uh, this virus or how the pandemic affects our use of politeness in general and how this virus affects our use of nonverbal communication. Okay, starting with the opposite tract. In light of the great changes swapping the world to due to corona pandemic, hence forth COVID-19, and the weakness of communication imposed by the pandemic, we see that the world has found a way to communicate and overcome the difficulties that people face during communication with the continuation of the pandemic. Even with the pandemic politeness emerges in its most useful form, it is possible that nonverbal communication can be more effective in the current circumstances. Thus, the different types of nonverbal communication will be employed to express politeness and courtesy, such as facial expressions, eye contact, gestures, proxemic smiles, and so on. These categories of nonverbal communication are of great use for effective social communication. They express and use for different functions, such as to show respect of or and privacy or to express politeness. Nowadays, these cues are employed in an effective and special way to face the circumstances imposed by corona pandemic and keep contact with others in a safe way with the sense of politeness. This study aims at presenting different categories of nonverbal communication in the light of politeness. It also explains the different functions of these cues. The study aims to show how these cues are affected by corona pandemic. In order to achieve these aims, the study hypothesized that nonverbal cues mostly used to show politeness and courtesy for the current circumstances, nonverbal politeness employed in various social situations, and the study tries to answer the question to what extent could corona pandemic affect the use of certain cues of nonverbal politeness. The main conclusions of the study are nonverbal cues corresponded differently according to the situation to express politeness. Nonverbal politeness employed extremely to serve the current situation imposed by the pandemic, and nonverbal politeness responded positively to the effect of corona pandemic. Some keywords to use to reach uh, the title of the uh, of my uh, study keywords nonverbal politeness covid-19 corona pandemic proximic gestures eye contacts and so on we have the introduction nonverbal politeness is a unique feature that characterizes civil societies through the use of certain cues of nonverbal communication within corona pandemic People try keeping politeness in its simplest image since Corona became a reality that must be coexisted with. People rush to look for the suitable way to communicate until the use of these cues of nonverbal politeness became a habit for people when they meet or when they gather for any reason. This paper is meant to highlight the use of nonverbal cues within the framework of politeness during corona pandemic. First, a general view of the theory of politeness will be discussed. Then, the two main dimensions of politeness strategies, negative politeness and positive politeness, 
will be shown in a comprehensive way in order to understand how certain cues affected differently corresponding to the current circumstances. Finally, pre present number of cues in relation to corona pandemic. I'm going to talk about politeness in general. But from a historical point of view, politeness is a phenomenon that human beings are not born with, but is acquired via the process of socialization. The notion of politeness owes a great deal of Kaufman's original study on face. In social communication, people present a face to others and to other spaces. We are obliged to protect both our own face and the faces of others to the extent that each time we interact with others, we play out a kind of mini-drama, a kind of bridge wall in which each party is required to recognize the identity that the other claims for himself or herself. The consequence is one of the most important way in which we reduce the ambiguity of communication is by making assumptions about the people we are talking with or talking to. When dealing with politeness, Brown and Levinson define face as the public self-image that every member wants to claim for himself. They state that there are two types of face, positive and negative face. The positive shows the need to get the acceptance of others. The positive, the positive consistent self-image or personality. Negative face is the need to be unimpended or by others, freedom of action and freedom from imposition. Positive face looks for solidarity, while negative face needs interconnects to recognize each other's negative face. When there is an interaction, awareness of both kinds of face must exist. When choosing a positive face, it will lead to move towards solidarity through offering a friendship, using compliments and formal language and other words never showing a threat to their face. On the other hand, when using a negative face, it will lead to differ difference, apologizing in directness and formality in language use. Uh, different, uh, uh, we can say different definitions about politeness are introduced by different researchers. For example, Ferguson states that politeness plays a visual role in preserving people's face and this makes it a cover term in pragmatics. Politeness, as noted by Crystal, is a phenomenon which is shared by sociolinguistics and pragmatists. Pragmatics, it has the characteristics of studying the social behavior with respect to use terms like courtesy, difference, rapport, and distance that require using appropriate tones of voice, devices of mictation, and appropriate address forms. Also, we have different definitions, uh, as I said before. Um, it focused on shared attitudes and values. By contrast, negative politeness, as stated by Holmes, he states that the basis for politeness lies in two distinctions, positive and negative politeness. The positive politeness is solidarity oriented. It focused on shared attitudes and values. By contrast, negative politeness pays people respect and avoids intruding on them. Politeness is best expressed as the practical application of good manners and etiquette. It is a culturally defined phenomenon and what is considered polite in one culture might be impolite in another. We have different strategies 
of politeness in general, uh, the one which will be adopted in this uh, study, it will be of Brown and Levinson strategies. Um, Brown and Levinson suggest or propose four politeness strategies to minimize the possibility of face damage, namely bold on record, positive politeness, negative politeness, and off record. This is a figure to show uh, the four strategies stated by Brown and Levinson. According to the current study, only the two dimensions or the two strategies, negative uh, politeness and positive uh, politeness, will be adopted. What is meant by positive politeness strategy? According to Brown and Levinson, positive politeness is defined as the strategy which is oriented by a speaker towards the positive face or the positive self-image of hearers. It is expressed by satisfying the hearers positive faces. Compliments is clearly an example of positive politeness strategy. Um, a different researcher states that Compliment simply fulfills the other person's wants directly. Waldorf states that positive politeness may lead to friendship. Using values in group markers and friendship is commonly applied in speaking. In addition, how to graves also emphasizes that using values in groups markers such as familiar address terms, honey, mate, pot, shows the use of positive politeness strategy. Besides, involving the hearers in an activity is also considered as a friendship expressing the same point of view. He states that inviting hearers to a situation leads both the speaker and hearers to cooperation. Therefore, the utterance, let's have lunch, as an example of invitation, applies positive politeness strategy. Positive politeness is function as a social groundwork that the speaker does not necessarily minimize the face threatening out to the addressee's positive face. Hence, positive politeness is not solely associated with faces, addresses, or the face threatening out, but also employed, but also employed to show familiarity or a closeness between the speaker and the hearer in a various social interaction. Brown and Levinson state that being optimistic is one of the ways to apply positive politeness strategy. It aims to respect hearers' notions of positive face. Similarly, Halty Graves mentions that a speaker can convey positive politeness by conveying optimism. Besides, agreement is also considered as a way to convey between the speaker and the hearer. Furthermore, he mentions that a speaker may seek points of agreement when applying positive politeness strategy even when disagreeing. Now, the second strategy, a negative politeness strategy, which is suggested by Brown and Levinson, Assert negative politeness strategy as a redressive action addressed to hearer's negative face. His want to have his freedom of action unhindered and his attention unembended. It performs the function of minimizing particular impositions on the hearer. To minimize the impositions, a speaker may use heritage and convey this is missing in the utterances. Halt Graves state that using headage is one way in, is one way to listen the imposition of a request. 
In addition, he added or mentions that negative politeness strategy involves attempt to listen, correction, co correction by conveying pessimism regarding the act to be performed. It simply implies a threat minimizing as the speaker doesn't want to embed the hearer's freedom of action. Negative politeness puts distance between speakers and hearers. Brown and Levinson mentioned that negative politeness strategy intends to create distance between the speakers and hearers to show respect behavior. Nonverbal communication. Whenever people perceive information that is not written or spoken, they comprehend something that is nonverbal. Humans have the capability of receiving information besides what is written or spoken. People's facial expressions, gesture, posture, and proxemics are the primary sources of the nonverbal messages they receive. It is a silent language not formally taught and which has existed existed before language was invented. Different categories of nonverbal communication can be stated. The first we are going to deal with a proxy mix. The norms of personal spaces seem to vary considerably from culture to culture. Proxemics is the study of how people use various types of space in their everyday lives, fixed features in space, semi-fixed space, and informal space. Fixed feature space is characterized by set boundaries. Semi-fixed feature space is defined by fixed boundaries such as furniture, informal spaces, or personal space is characterized by a personal zone that varies for individuals and circumstances. The use of each of these spatial relationships can facilitate or embed effective communication across cultures. The area that humans control and use most often is their informal space. Social distancing, two words that have recently entered the global lexicon, are not new to culture or anthropologists. Over 50 years ago, Edward Hall coined the term proxemics, establishing that the relationship and distance of human bodies to each other determines the range of social behaviors. In his book, the hidden dimension. He defined four scales of distances between people. Intimate, it is less than one meter and a half feet. Uh, shared with dear ones, it means that with family or intimate persons. And the second one is personal. One and a half or two, four feet shared with good friends and family. The third one is social, four to twelve feet shared with um, uh, different people, or we can say the the formal, semi-formal situation. And public, twelve to twenty-five feet and more shared with all, culturally rooted. These four scales are determined by the increasing physical distance between bodies, and each distance permits a different sensory, sensory uh, perception between people. So now I'm going to uh, mix between uh, the nonverbal communication from the point of view of politeness and how. COVID-19 affects our use of nonverbal communication concerning approximate uh, at least at the first. So uh, between two persons, how to uh, let or to stay far from others at least two met meters. So I'm going to show you.
NGO. You can see how key times to uh, practice social distancing, distancing inside your home when someone has or think they have COVID-19. If possible, stay at least six feet away. So at home, he's, a, he's talking about when you are at home and you have you uh, suspect that you have coronavirus. So stay away from other six six feet at least. And at the same time, when you are outside your home, stay at least six feet away from people outside of your household in indoor outdoor space, out of crowded places if possible. So this can tell us a lot about uh, uh, the proxemics nowadays is used by people. Within the existence of the pandemic, we have been asked to keep a social distance, not to bring people aside from the farm or ones we recited to our territories. We have to operate from our homes and stay largely within our neighborhoods. For most, this has meant that we cannot share space with close friends and even our families. It is even uh, all the pictures or the notes put in on the roads or uh, shown on the TV. It insists on uh, the social distance nowadays uh, concerning coronavirus. So when you are gathering, uh, it is uh, advised to be far away from others, at least two meters or at least six feet. It's concerning our uh, far, uh, first dimension proxemics. Lynch adds a further crucial fact, uh, factor in determining politeness behavior, for instance, social distance, which involves considering the, ru the rules, the roles people are talking in relation to one another in a particular situation, in addition to how well they know each other. The two strategies of politeness, negative politeness and positive politeness, are essential to, de do to determine the use of certain cues. For instance, social distance before coronavirus people used to say the social distance as a kind of negative politeness to express respect to others' privacy. Nowadays, social distance is a polite dimension for others' safety. Since people are obliged to communicate, they have to manage using the proxemics as a way to keep a safe contact with others. A rule to be followed concerning proxemics is maintain physical distancing, but stay in contact with people socially. You may start to hear the term physical distancing. This helps emphasize the importance of maintaining a physical distance, but in stressful times, it is even more important to maintain social contact with friends and family. At the moment, we need to support each other, but with physical distancing as much as possible. Webster Dictionary defines social distancing as a, part, uh, a practice aimed at maintaining a greater physical distance than usual from other people or avoiding direct contact with people or things in public places. Although a new life in light of social distancing may seem new to many, psychologists stress that it is important to understand that feeling a little bit remote at the present time is normal. A bill, a professor at the University of California, San Francisco, says that social distancing helps us cope and band together in order to slow the spread of the virus, especially if we manage it well. 
in addition to the walking mask, causing of the mask is uh, how the use of the mask causes as uh, approximate or, or social distance nowadays. One of the main ways that COVID-19 separates it is through the respiratory droplets that people throw out when they cough or sneeze. While research continues, people now realize that the virus can be spread by people without symptoms, which means that some people can be carriers of the infection without realizing it. This is one of the reasons why physical distancing is so important in places is common. But we cannot always stay away from others in crowded public places. So it is recommended to use a mask in such circumstances to protect each other from the risk of infection. You see, uh, this is picture shows how is social distance between others and how the use of masks considered as a social distance nowadays. Even in formal situations or uh, uh, over the world, they use the mask and they uh, insist on the social distance between each So concerning the politeness strategies and uh, the dimensions of nonverbal communication, negative politeness before coronavirus, proximity considered as a negative politeness to express respect of a privacy. But after coronavirus, proximity considers as positive politeness to keep contact with other safety. The second use of nonverbal communication is gestures. Gestures perhaps even more so than personal space, vary greatly from culture to culture. The consequences for this variation can be quite dramatic. Gestures are different from many others, other nonverbal expressions in that they are accessible to conscious awareness. They can be explained, illustrated, and taught to outsiders. University of Chicago professor Susan Golden has written on the function of hand gesture accompanying speech. She states that gestures play a part in the, in the thoughts we think. And the interesting aspect of gesture is people who are born blind and have never seen anyone use gestures, well, gestures as they speak. These movements are communicatively joined to or independent from verbal paralinguistic language. Paralinguistic language. For further explanation, Kandom argues that the term gesture is a labor from actions that have manifest deliberate expressiveness, a better understanding of the role of gestures in nonverbal communication may be gained by making use of the idea that some natural gestures are deliberately shown, even if they have not been intentionally produced. From responding with the outstretched hands, with a greeting, to avoiding kissing or hugging, passing by shaking hands with food, the habits of people around the world are, cha are changing in an attempt to reduce coronavirus infection through direct human contact. Coronavirus forced people to quit the habit of shaking hands and hugging when meeting each other. And the new welcome rules began to appear. And because we live in the era of COVID-19, which imposed on us a set of new and different things, 
including the rules of etiquette, then you will come may be limited to a simple pull in front of the others part, uh, other party to express respect and appreciation, and it replace the handshake or embrace. You see how they use, they put their hands or their chest to express welcoming or appreciation without shaking hands. This picture also shows different kinds of expressing welcoming, but using different movements. Greeting people by shaking hands as a habit which is considered as a positive politeness is changed to be negative one. Shaking hands is a behavior that people are accustomed to practicing on a daily basis and continuously which makes giving up and apologizing for them very difficult and may cause embarrassment and perhaps a criticism sometimes. Therefore, the cultivation of the custom of apology is required of individuals more than ever. With the importance of avoiding embarrassment or fear of a criticism and the occurrence or of uh, reproach and disagreement. Okay, I'm going to show you a video how we can uh, refuse to shake and your space around you. You can't control other people. So only you can control what you do and your space around you. You can't control other people. So that ability allows you to set the rules and regulations for what you expect at your house, what you expect of your kids, and what you do on your own and what you do on your own. You're living in a different world to the coronavirus. The way we interact with people has changed. Susan McKay teaches a lot more about Okay, okay. special. Sorry. Specialists consider that apologizing is a polite act that must be adhered to, especially in the light of the circumstances in which we live. And every individual is required to change himself so that positive behavior prevails in society. That's all for today. Any questions? Hey, so all.